The ETS Magnetic Drive Pump is a close couple mag drive pump manufactured in stainless steel. A robust heavy duty pump suitable for aggressive, toxic and hazardous liquids where high safety standards are essential. Stripping down this pump is always easiest without the motor attached so that you don't have to break the magnetic coupling between the internal and external magnet. When stripping down any pump, it is important to make sure that it is clean and free from all contaminants. The front casing is held on by eight bolts. If you can stand the pump up on its back, it'll be easier as you won't need to worry about the casing falling off when all of the bolts have been removed. Using the correct spanner, remove the bolts and washers. Once they have all been removed, lift the casing off exposing the cartridge assembly. This lifts out as a whole unit but will need supporting from underneath. This then leaves the isolation shell, which can be pushed out from the back of the pump. It does have a tendency to be a little stiff, but can be released with some gentle persuasion. On removal of the isolation shell, you will see a small groove for housing the PT100 thermocouple. This needs to line up with the thermocouple housing. Around the edge of the isolation shell, you will find the isolation shell gasket. In this instance, it is made from PTFE but it can also come in graphite for high temperature applications. This is the rotating element, impeller, magnet and bushing housing. To take it apart, use a 24mm socket. However, on the ETS-30 and the ETS-40, this is a reverse thread, so it's left to tighten and right to loosen due to the rotational direction of the pump. We remove the nut. Then the spring washer and then the magnet. Remove the key and the magnet's PTFE washer if that has come out of the magnet. but it may well still be in place. After this, we will remove the rear axial thrust and compensating ring. In high temperature applications, this will consist of a graphite ring with a steel backing ring. Lift the housing, making sure the rotating bush stays in place and remove the PTFE O-ring. We recommend replacing the O-ring during any repair or service. If you are removing the static bush, there are three screws and tab washers to remove and the static bush will push out from the rear. Remove the rotating bush, the front axial thrust, the next compensating ring whilst ensuring the impeller's PTFE O-ring remains in place. To put the pump back together, it's exactly the same process in reverse. However, you need to look out for the anti-rotation elements when replacing the rotation bush. Firstly, the axial thrust is replaced, ensuring that the compensating ring is the part that is touching the metal, so it's plastic into metal. The rotating bush has an external anti-rotation flat on both ends, and also one internally. Ensure the anti-rotation elements are the right way round. If you get it the wrong way, it will sit proud of the shaft, which means you won't be able to get the key back in. 
The bush housing goes in place. With the O-ring and the O-ring recess facing the impeller, we advise replacing the O-ring during any repair or service. Then the rear axial thrust goes on, followed by the compensating ring, as this will be the element touching the internal magnet. The key then goes in then, ensuring the PTFE O-ring is in the magnet. This is then placed onto the shaft. The spring washer and nut are replaced remembering it's a left hand thread to tighten. Always tighten to the correct torque settings, which will be in the manual. Ensure that the rotating element rotates freely. The isolation shell is then replaced, ensuring the PT100 grooves match up on the shell and the housing. Ensure that the hole in the shaft is clear, as this allows liquid to go through the shaft, helping to lubricate and cool the rotating elements. The cartridge assembly is then returned, ensuring it is not dropped or jarred due to the fragile nature of the bearings. Then, simply put the casing back on, ensuring you don't catch the O-ring and lower it down level. Then replace the nuts and the washers. When tightening the nuts and bolts, ensure to tighten across the pump and not rotational, and to the correct torque settings, which will be in the manual.